Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social and Association with William Hill and Empire Fight Store. We're in New York City, we're whipping about like last time, no Monclizzi on, we got the Stoney on, got the Cortez on, sporting the new balance, life is good. Why are you talking about yourself in third, like, in third, third person? We've got, I've, you know, we've got the, you, you've got, what is wrong with you? Like you've got Colm in the back here shaking his head as if to say, he always does that. Well, but, and you've got Frank in the front, who's already given you a pep talk this morning, brought you down a few peg, pegs or two, talked about your arrogance, talked about the dislike that people have for you within the industry. We talked about the social and media abuse that you're getting. Talked about you, can I have your new friends? Oh, Robert Diaz. Oh, oh, I'm in, oh, I'm in New Orleans. I'm having champagne and caviar with Robert Diaz. Never had champagne before, never had caviar before. Walking around just like complete and utter bell end. Thanks. True though. See, listen, I made you, right? But at the same time, I feel like I have to be on top of you before you just ruin everything. You know TikTok are gonna absolutely hate this. Who cares about TikTok? What oh. what is your li listen? But everything for you, you've got to get your priorities right in life. The most important thing in your entire life is TikTok views. Nah. It's right up there, mate. I'm going to go and have a cry after this interview. <laughs> or a shave. <laughs> or uh, you could just stand on down here because it's quite windy. you take most of that off. Banter. Thank you. Jason Quigley, Edgar Belanga. Mm. Cracking fight. Really excited. I mean, we just did the first face off. Um, as you, I mean, look at this. I don't know if you can get that in the background, Pass. Yeah, back. We're absolutely having it off, aren't we? We're loving it, life. Jo jokes aside, I mean, you are, and even me, you're from Sirencester. I'm from wherever you want to say, Brentwood, right? We're over here, Madison Square Garden on Saturday, and I love the fight. Edgar Belanga's been out of the ring for over 12 months. The hype train's in full effect, isn't it? You know, he could fight Canelo. Obviously, we know he's going to sell out MSG on Saturday. He's got a huge fan base doing loads of media. Last week, maybe we saw that get to Regis Progray a little bit. Edgar's got to deal with it better. And Quigley's bang up for it. Moving up to 168, had a fight there a month or so ago, whatever it was. Andy Lee in the corner this time. They're right up for it. And if Edgar Belanga's not the fighter that we're making him out to be, he's got a really, really tough fight on Saturday night. Let's talk a little bit about last week. Um, fair to say slightly underwhelming? Yeah, thanks for that. Um, disappointing, really, mate. Look, I can't spend my whole week and months hyping up a fight, hyping up a fighter, and then the main event doesn't deliver and tell you it was a great fight, a great night. It was disappointing. We left New Orleans a little bit deflated. I wanted Regis to make a statement. I mean, listen, on, on the upside, there's going to be a lot of fighters that will want to fight Regis Progre now. You know, one of them's flying into New York this week to discuss it with me and Devin Haney. So, um, obviously, Jack Cattrall wants a fight. We'd love to deliver that for him. You've got Montana Love against Richardson Hitchens coming up. Brilliant fight. Dalton Smith's fighting next week. I know it's a bit early for him, but it's not going to be long before he's in the mix for all these big fights. So, a um, little bit underwhelming, but straight into MSG this week, and I think we're going to have a great show. How far are you away from sort of getting this next fight for Regis? I spoke to Frank uh, last week and I think he said maybe, I think back end of September, early October. Is Devin Haney the likely opponent? And sort of if not, do you go uh, Jack Catterall? Uh, I mean, look, Catterall's with us and obviously Sam Jones is messaging me 462 times a day to make that fight. It's his job. And, and listen, Jack deserves nothing... Um, nothing less than a shot at the world title you know I think he, he's earned that right but Regis also wants the biggest fights out there the Devin Haney fight is a big fight and I think that you know it's between those two obviously we'd have to get a deal done with uh, with Devin but we'll have to see Anthony Joshua um, just firstly on the Dillian White front now looks like that won't be the opponent uh, is it true he asked for 10 million no it's not true no, it's not true at all. We we made him an offer, of which they made it clear was nowhere near their expectations. And, and quite honestly, there were very little negotiations after that. He never asked for 10 million. Not sure where that came from, but that's not the case.
Um, now I suppose you go for a top 15 ranked opponent. The man, a man who is in the top uh, 15 with all the governing bodies is Adjit Kabayel. Are you exploring that fight at all? Uh, I mean, he may be on a long list. I mean, anyone in the top 15. But I don't mind being honest. AJ's going to fight Deontay Wilder in December. That's that, That's like our 100% focus. So he needs a fight against someone who is going to allow him to work on under the lights everything he's been working with Derek James there's no point fighting a fight that's against someone he's going to take out in a round and it's difficult to fight an elite top three or five guy when you're fighting Deontay Wilder four months later so we're in a little bit of a difficult position it is what it is we want him to fight I don't think Saudi want him to fight because they want him to be ready for Deontay Wilder in December but we all feel as a team and Derek James feels Anthony and 258 feel that it would be beneficial for his preparation to have that fight in August. Guys in the top 15, the majority of them he sort of already fought uh, or sort of coming off losses etc. The reason I mentioned Caballero is because he's sort of not been in with anyone uh, perhaps in, in the top 15 but ranked with all the governing bodies. I mentioned Jarrell Miller but not, not a realistic... Or I don't think Jarrell Miller fight's going to happen. No, no, I mean, look, you know, who knows what's going to happen in the future? We know my feelings on that, but I'm not going to go back there now. Um, Caballero is the European champion. He's top 15. I mean, he's he's on a list of four or five that it could be, but we need to close it out this weekend, really, if he's, if he's going to fight on August 12th. And we are up against it time-wise. You know, we've got a lot of fights looking to get out. We, we may end up merging the July 29 show into August 12th and just put on a massive card of fights um, but we need to explore that with the boss in front over the next uh, couple of days Fabio Wardley, uh, I imagine that that's potentially one that you merge into August 12th what sort of opponent are you looking at uh, is Dave Allen yeah, still look, on the I radar get, and if get, not away from British? I get a lot of messages about Dave Allen and he, uh, from him as well I'm not against that fight um, the board, in a conversation, made it clear that they wouldn't necessarily sanction that fight for the British heavyweight title, um, which would be a shame, but we'll see. We could do it for Fabio's WBA Intercontinental. I, I'm not saying that Dave Allen fight is not happening, but that's where we're at with it at the moment. We, the first thing is, is Fabio Wardley fighting July 29? Is he fighting August 12th? You know, we want a long-term plan with Fabio because he's going to have to fight David Adelaide probably October, November. Um, but, you know, hopefully you will see him fight, you know, July 29, August 12th. If you had to pick one, um, would you say that the show still goes on August 29 or would you say now the likely option is to have that on August 12th? Well, there's no Saturday on August 29th, so oh, it won't be there. Sorry, July 29 yeah. on August 12th. Um, I think... You know, because it's not going to be a Andy Ruiz, a Usyk, uh, well, you know, for AJ, it would make sense to put a blockbuster card on and, and merge those fights. You know, you're talking about Wardley, you're talking about Felix Cash against Ammo Williams, Ebony Bridges is, is due a fight on that card. Um, we've got, you know, potentially Conway against Adolf. We've got so many fights to get out, so you could end up seeing one big show. Joe Cordina, what's next for him? I know Foster's team were there last week in New Orleans. Um, I believe now that's probably not the next fight for him. No, I don't necessarily think Foster will be next, but he's due to fight at the end of September. I, I want to make this Alpha Barrett fight, I do. You know, I think it's a good all-British fight. I also love the Maurizio Lara fight as well, if he moves up to Super Feather. But, you know, we'll talk to Tony and Charlie and, and Joe and see who he wants to fight next. But end of September is the date for Joe. Derek Chisora said that you should wear a suit and act like a proper businessman and if John Fury comes at you, uh, you should sue him for everything he has so John Fury would go to prison. <laughs> yeah, I love Del, but I love John Fury. Look, as I said before, if someone's going to chin you, they're going to chin you. And it is what it is. Like, I don't know. I don't know why John Fury seems to wish for my demise, but as always, I wish everybody happiness. Um, next for Mauricio Lara, is he someone that's also maybe uh, an option for Joe Caldina? Yeah, he may fight in Mexico, but if he chooses to move to Super Feather, I do like Caldina against Lara. You know, he's got a high profile, but we'll see. We'll speak to his team and speak to Joe and Tony and everybody and see what's next. I've actually already answered that question, but um, yeah, on we go.
Canelo versus Charlo, is that the, uh, do you believe, likely next fight? I believe sort of discussions for Bivol are no longer ongoing? There's no ongoing uh, conversations for the Bivol fight at the moment. So I think Charlo, by the sounds of things, could be a front runner for, for him next. With Bivol, what sort of next fight? Frank mentioned that uh, Dan Aziz is currently a promotional free agent. I believe he's WBA number two. Do you Have you had any discussions with his team? No, I think Frank's going to. I mean, um, I don't really know a lot about it. Um, Frank Smith's out there causing trouble. I'll, I'll leave that to him these days. If Dan, if Dan Aziz is a free agent, which we understand. I just want to give a Brit that shot. You know, when you're looking for an opponent, obviously um, Joshua Boatsy turned the fight down. He's, he's also not available promotionally. Um, I love Bivol against Anthony Yard. I think that's a fight we're going to speak to George Warren about as well. He's earned the right for another world title fight after that great performance. Obviously, Craig Richards has already fought Bivol. Um, I think Dan Aziz has, you know, he's got himself to number two. Um, he's won British Commonwealth and European Championships. I'd love to give him the shot. Dimitri Bivol. I think it's a great story and if anyone's going to get a shot I'd love to give it to a British fighter so we'll, we'll open negotiations with Dan Aziz if, if he is a free agent and uh, maybe that's a fight you see. Victor Conte has a, a jibe here and there and, and has continued your thoughts on it? Yeah look he said that um, there was no drug testing for Regis Progre there, there is drug testing for Regis Progre they're both signed for the WBC clean, test, uh, clean boxing program it's under the VADA test um, there was testing from the commission as well. And also, like, generally we will pay above and beyond the layers of testing for additional testing to that. We generally do that for the bigger fights. It costs, I don't know, 30000 Frank, $35,000 a fight to do that. It's really difficult to do that for every single fight, but every major fight we will have an additional layer of testing. So if Victor Conte wants to pay that $35,000 for every single fight, I would be more than happy to, to make that possible, you know? Um, but there you go. Um, just sort of going back, sorry, onto the Canelo Charlo front. Um, obviously, you've always had a good relationship with him and Canelo team, and work with his other fighters, uh, Martinez. Um, would you plan on maybe still being involved in in that fight week, like you were a little bit? I think you were there for the plant fight. Only, only to support Sal. So I mean, you know, I'm available for those guys for anything they need me for. Um, but we've got, you know, we we know the relationship. If we're not bring in and making the fight we're just involved in a you know friendly capacity I think I've done the last six Canelo Alvarez fights out of seven and if we can't deliver the the options that they want they're obviously open to make another fight so um, spoke to Eddie spoke to Sal throughout this whole process and you know obviously want to see him win the fight so if I am there it'll be really just to support or in any way possible they need me. Sonny Edwards has tweeted that he's a bit frustrated with uh, uh, Bam's side of things regarding that, that fight. Are you able to just give any clarity? Frank yeah. still believes that is the next fight. We, we're in final negotiations for that fight. Look, you know, the fighters will are ready to sign. The teams sometimes make things a little bit more difficult. We're talking to Bam's team about that fight. Sonny's couldn't be more willing to make that fight no like you gotta understand like with Sonny he's not even you know oh I've got to go to America I want this I want that I like he's just going I'm in but he's you know he doesn't want to be we have to represent Sonny as well we represent both fights it's got to be fair and at the moment we have a fantastic offer for Bam Rodriguez I believe he's going to accept that offer Sonny's done so really it's just on Bam and his team now to agree this fight. And it's a, it's a great fight, and I believe it will get done. I asked Twitter for some questions, as you saw, and this funny one came up. I've asked it to Frank. I want to sort of give it to you as well. Uh, if you had to go on... If you had to go on holiday and spend an equal amount of time, uh, who would you choose to go with, and in what order? Oscar De La Hoya, Frank Warren, Lawrence Acoli, and Ben Shalom. God, blimey. Well, I mean, look, Os <laughs> holiday with Oscar... De La Hoya would be absolutely wild, wouldn't it? I mean, it's not my type of holiday, but Jesus, I don't know if I'd return. <laughs> um, if I was going to go on holiday with any of those. You have to rank it in order. I 
I mean, number one, obviously, despite our differences, probably Lawrence Akoli, because you know we once got on very well. You know, we've got some good memories. Number two. Oh, I don't know. I'd probably go Oscar De La Hoya because I would just go to the club and watch him unleash. Do you know what I mean? I'd just sit there with me sparkling water and uh, with a little bit of lime in and just go, go on, Oscar the boy, and just watch the car crash unfold. Um, I, don't, I don't know Ben or Frank. It's difficult to say. Ben's not the most exciting, but... Um, you know, we could we could open a conversation there. I don't know. It's a tie between that. Frankie's apparently great. You know, my old man has always told me. And they haven't always got on, but my old, my old man's always gone that said that Frank's good company. So going out for a bite to eat with Frank would probably be, you know, could have a little chin wag and then Ben maybe Ben. I don't know. Like Ben might be fun. I don't know. And then on the other hand, for a tear up. Oh, what's the other one? A tear up. Having a, if you had to have a tear up with them, in what order of hardest to easiest to fight would they be? I'll give you Frank's order. Uh, Lawrence Acoli at the top, Oscar De La Hoya, Frank Warren, Ben Shalom. Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. I'll go, I'll go the same. I mean, I don't know if... Um, Frank's I, got a bit of fighting. Yeah, fight Frank, no, yeah. Frank, Frank Warren, I'm, look, he's getting on a bit now. He's like my old man, but probably back in the day could have a little bit of a tear-up. Bite, bite ears off. Well, <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> you lot, what do you lot talk about? <laughs> you never know, Ben Shalom might be a bit of a dark horse. You're laughing at. Might be able to have a go. He's been around boxing, hasn't he, for quite a few years. So might might have had a little, might have had a little few spars. I think Frank. I think Frank Smith against Ben Shalom is a tremendous That's fight. Six. Yeah. I'd do it. How does I'd that do fight it. go? Uh, first round stoppage. To be I've fair, got... yeah. Frank uh, has had a white collar fight and won against the geezer from Gogglebox. He was pissed though. He, if Frank stopped him in the first round, <laughs> there was claret everywhere. And for the first 20 seconds, Frank got absolutely smashed to bits and then just stopped him. How much do you think I should get for that fight? Against Ben Shalom? Yeah. On Misfits. Split? Something like. That's 50 50 split. I'll take that. Right. That's fine. He's got. He's got you, do, you do much bigger views than Ben Shalom. Because yeah. we discussed this earlier. But as he always talks about, he might have. He's got a platform. You know, yeah, he's, yeah that's got, true. You know. You've got no platform. Yeah. Se- seven and a half grand each. No, something I, like that. I reckon I'd do it for a hundred k. What dollars? Would you? Yeah. I reckon Callum might stick that on. Hundred k. Hundred percent. Let's offer. Sh- let's get Calla to offer him a hundred k to fight you on Misfits. I would love to see that. <laughs> I'd, do I'd want 10 mil if I'm going to fight anyone just putting that out there So, but that's obviously the levels between us could I just finally get you to react to this now I've got I think you may have seen it but just on video I thought it was very good um, my accent needs a bit of work yeah um, I saw that my could, one's terrible yeah but could you just your one's brilliant but could you just react to it anyway on, on okay. video for the people that haven't so seen it so when you do on TikTok Eddie Hearn reacts to Parsons impression could you hold it go please on. to the phone this is Charlie Parsons from Boxing Social here with the one and only Eddie Hearn. Edward, how are we? Before we do this, I want to go on record. This guy, Tony, I think the impersonation of me is awful. I don't think anyone can really do impersonations of me because obviously I'm so unique. But the one of you is unbelievable. Oh, you've got a little... Oh, you're lucky that little something else didn't come up there, little message. Um, terrible of me, brilliant of you. Hello, this is Charlie Parsons. But the back and forth is good, right? Yeah, this is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social. Eddie, how are you? New York today for Fight Week of Belanga quickly. Like Dev Sarni. <laughs> you don't like Dev Sarni. No, he could can't, fight him. I can't say I'd fight Dev Sarni. It's less money. I like Dev Sarni. No, I'm money. putting it out there. I quite like Dev Sarni. I think he's quite amusing. Yeah, I've never money. met him, but I, you know, you, you, I know, like, I don't want to stitch you up, but, you know... Like you, you've never said anything bad about Dev Sign, but you look, sometimes you'll read a tweet and go. I think oh. it can be a pillock, but also <laughs> I don't think there's as much money in the Dev Sign <laughs> fight as there is in the Shalom no. fight. I just don't I, think. I'm, I'm, so like, I would. Sani hasn't got as much of a platform. Just his Twitter. Yeah, no, but I, I would back. I'd, I'd quite like Sani to beat you. What really? I don't know, I've never met him. But really? I actually, listen, I do a lot of the time. I don't know why, but I don't think I follow him. But it always comes up, you know, where it's like just randoms come up on your timeline. You yeah, I've got to change that. But he's quite amusing. 
Like I've never met him. He's a bit. He's a bit of a, a sort of cartoon character. I don't know. Like you know when he does the ring announcing, he's funny. But I actually think he's quite amusing. So I don't. I don't mind him. But Frank's got Frank. Frank wants all the smoke. Eddie Helm, thank you very much for your time.